Um, okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Ali Amora. I am the president of the Hyde Park Kenwood Community Conference. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining uh, the HPKCC Transit Task Force for this community dialogue on Chicago's e-scooter program uh, to hear from three scooter operators about the program and to get some of our questions answered. Uh, <clears throat> please do note that this event is being recorded and live streamed on Facebook. Tonight, we are hosting our eighth virtual community dialogue forum this year. Uh, for those who are new, the Hyde Park Kenwood Community Conference is an independent membership-based community organization that connects and convenes people in a green, diverse, and safe community around activities and issues that affect our future. You can learn more about um, HPKCC and join the conference um, and view previous community dialogue programs on our website, www.hydepark.org. <clears throat> All links mentioned tonight will be displayed in the chat window. Uh, we'll be sending out a post-meeting message with all the links mentioned this evening. Um, before I turn this over to the Transit Task Force co-chairs, please remember um, that this is a public forum. Out of respect for all the participants, uh, please use appropriate language and keep your questions and comments brief uh, and to the topic at all times. Uh, the conference reserves the right to mute or uh, remove participants for inappropriate comments or comments that do not relate to the topic at hand. Um, so at this point, um, it's my pleasure to introduce HPKCC board member and the Transit Task Force co-chair, Gary Osawart. Good evening. I'm Gary Osawart, a longtime officer with the conference and co-chair of the Trans Task Force with Roger Huff. For over two decades, the Transit Task Force has collaborated to achieve significant improvements in service from CTA, Metra, and PACE, as well as uh, sh uh, with sharing our streets. Several changes in transit and mobility are happening. Tonight, we are covering the scooter uh, pro pilot project. Through the Coalition for a Modern Metro Electric, we have been advocating for discounted metro f electric fares in the city, improved service and transfer between Metro and CTA, and the Hyde Park Herald recently has an article on that, what is now called Cook County's Fair Transit South Cook Pilot Program, set to, to launch in, in January. We encourage you to join us to monitor and optimize Optimize these various changes. Read more on about the tech, the task force uh, on our on the task force web page, uh, hydepark.org, uh, transit task force, and contact us via the email address in the ch in, in the chat window, transit at hydepark.org. Here is uh, is the uh, co-chair co Roger Huff, who will introduce our speakers and moderate. Good evening. The city's uh, second e-scooter pilot is underway. It'll run until mid-December. There's a lot of information on the city's webpage, including a link to the city's request for feedback to be considered in their evaluation of the pilot. You may have seen scooters locked to a signpost or being ridden about in our community. Perhaps you've signed up and taken a ride. Uh, the purpose of tonight's forum is to address community questions and provide feedback. At the start here, we'd like to have a, we have a brief poll to collect some basic information. There'll be another brief poll at the end. We'll send the poll results out in the post-meeting email. Could you display the poll, please? So if you would quickly check your choices and press submit.
Okay, let's close the poll. On the city's website, there is a two minute safety video and we're gonna show that now. It was prepared for last year's scooter pilot. And so the video does not reflect the lock to fixed object requirement that was added for the 2020 pilot. So you, you need to keep that in mind while you're viewing it and note that for this pilot, operators are encouraged to use street signs, light poles to lock to when deploying their scooters. However, bus stop signs, disabled parking signs, private property, especially fences, are off limits for locking scooters. Operators are discouraged from locking to bike racks because the cycling community has expressed concern that scooters are taking up a lot of bike parking. Would you run the video, please? Sure, you got it. Protect your head and wear a helmet while you ride. Low speed electric mobility devices, including scooters, may not be ridden on the sidewalk if the rider is over 12 years of age. Obey traffic laws when riding in the road and ride in a bike lane when possible. Not park scooters so they obstruct the sidewalk. Do not park scooters so they obstruct ADA accessible infrastructure, including sidewalk curb ramps. Do not park scooters on the grass, including parkways. Do not park scooters so they obstruct building entrances. Always park considerately, away from buildings and crosswalks, and so that you are not obstructing the right of way. When possible, park your scooter next to a bike rack, parking meter, or sign pole. Do not vandalize scooters, even if they are parked incorrectly. Help out your fellow Chicagoans and move incorrectly parked scooters so they are no longer blocking the right of way. Scoot safely, Chicago! All right. So now, after hearing some brief remarks, uh, just a couple minutes each, by representatives of the scooter operators, we'll then cover questions based on the input we receive uh, in advance. Now, for our scooter operators, we have three operating here in Chicago, and in corporate alphabetical order, the first, uh, Mr. Maurice Henderson, represents Bird. Could you unmute, Mr. Henderson? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Roger, and uh, thank you uh, to the task force for the invitation. Uh, as Roger mentioned, my name is Maurice Henderson. I'm the uh, Senior Director for Government Partnerships at Bird Rides, Inc. Uh, our mission is uh, a simple one. We are trying to uh, reduce traffic congestion, reduce uh, climate impact, provide uh, a safe and affordable uh, micromobility option for the greatest number of people. Uh, we were the you know, innovators of the space in terms of, of the micromobility shared uh, e-scooter market uh, started in 2017. Uh, from that time, we, we started a, a little project in uh, Santa Monica, California. Uh, we've grown to a, a, a global footprint, but, but feel ourselves to be a, a local company. Uh, we, we, we've been honored to be part of both the 2019 and now the 2020 uh, scooter pilot uh, in Chicago. Uh, we've learned a lot of lessons, have built some great partnerships uh, within the community and with uh, the city government. 
uh, and look forward to continuing uh, to work with you in partnership to provide this uh, micro mobility service to folks across Chicago. Thank you. Uh, Rich, do you have some data to share with us? Oh, I don't know if you wanted to ask those as questions or, or not, but yeah, I've plenty, plenty of data uh, to share. I'm talking about the data that I sent you. Yeah, referring to- How many to cities data. are you in? Uh, we are in over 100 cities across the globe. Um, in terms of, uh, you asked me about the average number deployed in the zip code. Uh, I believe it is between 75 and 100, depending uh, on, on any given time during the day. Uh, in terms of the average travel distance for your for riders, it's uh, right now uh, somewhere between uh, a mile and a half to two miles, um, which you know, for, for folks, uh, we've seen as an industry and certainly as a company an extreme uh, growth in the number of trips and also um, the number of people who are, who are traveling using scooters. Um, let me see, in terms of the uh, estimate for uh, the percentage of riders going to and from transit, uh, the city provided uh, some survey data, I believe either last year or earlier this year, that said on average uh, it was looking like around 34% uh, of those trips were being uh, to and from uh, transit, which was consistent with what we saw uh, in 2019 in various markets across the globe. Uh, so we know that this is not being used strictly for uh, leisure activity that people are using as a community device. Um, what are the other questions you asked? Uh, you briefly, you asked about uh, pricing. So for a single trip, uh, our standard fare is a dollar to unlock with a uh, 37 cent per minute charge. Uh, we have a weekly pass, which is unlimited free unlocks uh, for $1.99. And we have a community uh, pricing model, which uh, provides a 50% discount for low income riders. Uh, we also provide it to Pell Grant recipients. Uh, we work with select nonprofits and markets to, to provide that service to their both staff and, uh, and their clients. Uh, as well as a, a veterans program that we call Red, White, and Bird, uh, that we waive the unlock fee. Uh, and we also have a discount program for seniors. Um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Lee Foley, representing Lyme. And if you would also be sure to cover those same questions to. Absolutely, thank you, Roger. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for being here. Uh, as Roger mentioned, my name is uh, Lee Foley. You see on here, I, my full name is Lee Aaron. Um, I am a Chicagoan, so I was uh, telling Roger and, and Allie and Barbara earlier, um, if, if we were in person in, in, a, in a time period, not during a pandemic, I would have been glad to have hopped on uh, one of our Lime scooters and took the 10 or 15 minute trip from Woodlawn up to Hyde Park uh, for this meeting. Um, so to, to discuss Lime, uh, so we've been in Chicago since 2018. Um, some of you all may know if you were on the uh, in, on the southwest side of the city, um, Auburn Gresham neighborhood. Uh, Lime helped the city launch its first dockless bike pilot um, in 2018, um, and that sort of that gets to the origins of Lime as an operator, as a micro mobility operator. Um, we started off as a bike. So if you're on Lime's uh, social media, you'll see us call it Lime Bike, um, and that's the origin of our company is uh, through bikes, e-bikes. Um, and we were one of the first operators here to help pilot that here in the city uh, on the south side uh, for Dockless. <clears throat> uh, in 2019, we were one of the 10 operators along with Bird and Spin who are here now um, to operate in, uh, on Chicago's uh, west side and northwest side. Um, and we took away some really strong learnings on how we could best serve the city. And so now in 2020, we serve the city citywide. We have more than 3,300 scooters uh, that are out currently um, across the city. Uh, we average about uh, about 50 to 75 scooters with, between the two zip codes between Oakland, Kenwood, and Hyde Park. Um, and that doesn't include sort of that, some of that area in 60637 for Woodline um, and South Shore. Uh, and so we're, we're glad to be a part of the community in, in Hyde Park where we've seen about 200 trips daily in Oakland and Kenwood and, and about, excuse me, 200 trips uh, weekly in Oakland and Kenwood and about 850 trips weekly um, in Hyde Park. Uh, where the average trip distance is about 13 minutes in Kenwood and about eight minutes in Hyde Park. Um, and the trips average somewhere between uh, a half, three quarters of a mile and a mile. Uh, and so we're seeing people really take on and really uh, latch to scooters 
Um, not just for leisure, but we know that that's a part of it. Chicago is a fun city to be in. So leisure and recreation is a part of exploring Chicago, but that's also connecting people for their, their last mile <laughs> needs and connecting them to businesses, particularly along 53rd Street and Hyde Park. Um, Lime uh, has, take, has provided over 50% of all equity rides um, in Chicago's priority areas. So between all three operators, 50% of those rides have been taken on Lime scooters. And that's because we've committed ourselves to equity. We've committed to automatically providing a 50% discount so glad to be able to talk about that throughout the rest of the program. Daniel Vizinovich. All right. Spin. Awesome. Yeah, so just a, a quick little overview. Then we're we're based in San Francisco. Um, also, much like uh, Lime and Bird, we participated in last year's program. Came away with a lot of findings. Um, I mean. The lock two component is probably the biggest, one of the bigger changes along with uh, just the expansion of the service area. Uh, we've been super compliant to meeting all of those requirements as far as making sure 2.5% of the fleet, fleet is deployed in each of those uh, equity zones. And um, yeah, just doing all the outreach with the safety ambassadors that CDOT has connected us with and uh, all the distribution of the helmet uh, and yeah, in, in general, um, just going over these questions that you threw our way, um, on average, we have about 40 scooters deployed in uh, each of those zip codes that you provided. Um, oh, and then also just for an overview, we have over 70 markets in the US and we're starting to grow uh, in some global markets. We're in uh, four different cities in Germany, uh, a few more in the UK, and we're currently looking into uh, operating in Spain at the moment. So, yeah. And then as far as the average travel distance for our riders in your areas, uh, they've been on average 1.8 miles, and uh, our trips in those areas have accounted for 2% of all of our trips during this, uh, this permit or this pilot program. So, yeah, and then as far as uh, the rides going to and from transit stations, we don't really know what that is at the moment for this current program. Um, but in other markets and last year, the number is always somewhere between 20 and 30% of our rides go to and from transit stations. However, um, based on a lot of the, the outreach that I've done so far and uh, yeah, it just sounds like fewer trips are being made to and from public transit these days just to due to the, co the the pandemic and just people's general fear of of riding public transit these days so I'd be actually really curious to see what those numbers are after this uh, program's over and we get some surveys out um, pricing oh yes and then the pricing is a uh, dollar to unlock 39 cents a minute and we also offer uh, an equity program called spin access which offers 50% uh, off fares and uh, cash payment options and uh, non-smartphone uh, options as well. Okay, so let's turn to a few questions. The, the most significant area of concern from people was the safety issues. Uh, but uh, I see some people have already started putting questions in the chat and so you can keep doing that as we proceed down here. And, and, uh, um, and, and Roger. I just want to jump in and um, we are going to be taking after we have the moderated portion, um, we will be doing questions either via chat or if people want to raise their hand um, and they want to ask questions. Once we get to the kind of open mic question uh, time, you can you can ask your questions um, either way. Um, and I, I did want to take just a quick second to just thank we have fourth ward Alderman Sophia King here with us tonight. Um, so I wanted to thank you for being here with us, Alderman. Um, so back to you, Roger. Okay. So, Actually, um, also, um, Officer Lee, I've been on the air with you guys too. So, I'm going to join um, this conversation and want to learn more about the scooters as well. So, hello, everyone. Hi. Okay. Hi, I'm so sorry. This is Kimberly Webb from Alderman Hairston's. I'm also on the line. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So, Many of the comments have been received uh, are relate to sidewalk riding. Uh, the city's website's clear, the video uh, was cleared. You, you can't legally ride on 
the sidewalks. Adults can't. What's your company doing to educate riders about the rules of the road applicable to scooters and to discourage sidewalk riding? What I'd like to do is to direct this to uh, one of you and then we'll have more questions and pass it around. So uh, Maurice with Bird, why don't you take that first? What are you doing about sidewalk riding? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Briefly, sidewalk. we've got a lot to cover. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, sidewalk riding is, is obviously a challenge. Uh, we engage our riders from the, the very first time they open the app uh, with in-app instructions about uh, following the rules of the road, including avoiding sidewalk riding. Obviously, in some markets, that's a little bit different. In Chicago, obviously, we, we encourage folks not to ride on the sidewalk. Uh, we do continual education, uh, both through the app. We do uh, safety demonstrations uh, where we walk through and talk to, to, to individuals about um, safe riding behavior. Um, to the degree that we get reports about sidewalk riding and we uh, are able to identify the rider, we engage that individual uh, through education measures. If we continue to, to see um, reckless behavior, reckless riding behavior, uh, we, we can take the extreme uh, measure of expelling someone from the application. And we're also, of course, iterating uh, technologically on ways to, to improve uh, the experience for both riders and non-riders. And I would just say, Roger, that, that what, we, what we found in city after city uh, through our uh, surveying is that the vast majority of riders, I think closer to, to 80 or 90 percent of them, say the reason that they end up riding on the sidewalk is because they don't feel that the infrastructure on the street provides them a safe riding experience. So it's something that, that we work with cities, um, particularly through the, the data aggregation that we do and the data that we share uh, to help cities improve on where the investment should be made around micromobility options. Okay. Uh, Lee, anything very, very briefly to add to supplement that? Yeah, similar to what Maurice said, I, that's exactly what our findings are. People ride on sidewalks when they don't feel comfortable riding on streets. And so we work with community groups uh, such as the conference here to help advocate for better infrastructure for biking and scooters, for micromobility in general, so we can get more cars off the streets. Um, in addition, we have a pilot program for sidewalk riding detection technology uh, that we're working on bringing to Chicago. Daniel? Yeah, um, a lot of overlap with, with uh, the previous answers, but I mean, ways that we've also been working, I mean, so the programming, we've been working very closely with uh, CDOT's Safe Ambassadors to do in-person events popping up in hotspots in various neighborhoods across Chicago throughout this whole pilot program. We've done uh, four, we've got two more at least planned for the rest of the program. We also are working on uh, sidewalk detection technology that we're planning on rolling out for next year. And then we also partner with local organizations to work on street infrastructure improvements. So that means by either donating funding to get like a bike lane uh, produced or contributing street infrastructure like bollards or paint uh, to get that project uh, okay. through the finish line. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. So just, uh, I know the city has requirements. Uh, uh, Maurice, briefly, very briefly, what is the safety equipment that's provided or available for riders? So I, if I'm understanding your question correctly, uh, Light, all, bells, helmets. Yeah, so all, all vehicles are required to have uh, a headlight, tail light, which they do, uh, reflectors, uh, information in terms of we've got hang tags that provide information about, again, the rules of the road and, and safe riding behavior. There's also information that is uh, taped to the vehicle. Um, there's a, as Roger mentioned, there's a, a bell for auditory uh, warning. Uh, the headlights that we use are, are state of the art, um, extraordinarily bright with range. Um, we encourage uh, helmet use, uh, both through the app. Uh, we've done uh, with our safety demonstrations. Okay. You know, we we, can, others, we gotta uh, keep moving. Uh, Okay. The uh, enforcement actions, uh, one of you mentioned that you could, in extreme cases, ban somebody. Has that ever happened on any of your three companies so far? Not in the No. Are any of the three companies aware of warnings or tickets being issued by police? No, we haven't, we haven't seen any of our riders or heard from our riders that they have interacted with police officers. Uh, obviously, uh, Business Affairs and Consumer Protection is always out there with their 
um, enforcement inspectors. Anything else to add? Okay, let's move on to accidents. What's the responsibility of scooter companies, riders and pedestrians when there's an accident where somebody's hurt or scooter damages property or the scooter itself is damaged? Do you want to start with that, Daniel? That's that's the first question that is on that list, correct? Yep. Yeah, um, so in the case of an injury uh, sustained while riding our vehicle, liability varies and cannot be generalized really. So uh, if there is a product faulty, SPIN will assume the liability and that's kind of all I really had for that one. What about accident reporting? Uh, accident reporting, so that's also a new thing for me. Um, uh, so we, we work closely with, with all city campus partners in the event where there is an accident involving one of our vehicles. Okay. Um, but yeah, we don't publicly disclose that information, uh, due to privacy concerns and, and okay. we do. Work. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Lee, anything to add on accidents? Uh, yeah, we work closely with the city on indemnification. Uh, we carry our own insurance uh, as an operator here in Chicago that's specific to Chicago, um, and it meets all of the city's uh, limitations. Um, and we work closely with police officers. Um, if there is an incident, as Daniel mentioned, if there's faulty equipment, that's something that has to be investigated. Uh, but through and through, uh, riders accept uh, through their, uh, the privacy notice and through the terms and conditions um, liability um, if it's done on the rider's part. Uh, and so we encourage riders to always ride safely and to always be aware of their surroundings while on our vehicles. And uh, Maurice, uh, have you observed uh, how law enforcement responds to accidents with scooters? What what do we what can you say? Uh, I haven't seen law enforcement's engagement in an act in a in a crash in in Chicago. Um, I have. Uh, been uh, aware of other instances uh, in other markets. Uh, as, as Lee just mentioned, uh, we have a relationship with law enforcement and first responders. So to the degree that uh, there is, you know, data or information that needs to be shared, uh, we certainly, you know, comply with the relevant laws and things of that nature. I just wanted to respond to your first question about the um, uh, crashes. It, it, the, the one exception that I think didn't get mentioned is that Chicago requires the operators to be liable for, for wrongful actions that may be on the fault of the city. So for example, a, a pothole or a, um, a, a city vehicle or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. So based on this pilot, we have all agreed uh, to that provision. Uh, we're not sure that that is actually the most fair provision because that's not something that would be applied to most other enterprises. Um, so that's cer certainly one of the areas where, you know, we look to, to partner further with the city on, on uh, best practices. Okay, Let, let's move on to violations where there's problems. And we've had people uh, both in the chat and earlier say they've seen things, unsafe riders, uh, scooters in inappropriate locations. What should the folks in our community do if they observe that situation? You, let's start with back with you, Daniel. Yeah, so uh, the, the standard protocol for that one is just to contact support, which will uh, connect them with our operations team. Um, so unsafe riders or even scooters left in inappropriate locations, it's the same number. Uh, you contact them and we will uh, address the issue within an hour. Okay, and Lee for line. Yeah, we ask that residents uh, report unsafe riding, uh, uh, report misparked or improperly parked vehicles. Um, and we are continually working on our customer service to ensure that we get to them uh, within two hours. And Maurice? Uh, well, one of the first things is if someone has an app, uh, they can use community mode uh, to respond directly through the app. And that applies for rider and non-rider. Uh, to the other uh, points that my, my colleagues have made here. Uh, we have a, a 866 number, uh, website, obviously social media. So we, you know, we obviously take all um, requests and, and notifications of challenges uh, very seriously and comply with the city's SLAs around uh, the time for remediation of issues. And uh, just circling back to what you're aware of law enforcement has been doing, if 
are you aware of any of you of what law enforcement has done and they've been in the presence of unsafe writing or things like that? No, currently not aware of any, again, any interactions that law enforcement has okay. had. Okay. okay. Uh, we're now ready to take some questions from the floor. And Ali, I believe, has been monitoring the chat. Yeah. And, uh, you can continue putting questions in the chat and uh, yeah. well, turn it uh, over to you, Ali. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, and, uh, and once again, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, thank you, Lee and Maurice and Daniel. Um, so uh, I do see we have um, some hands and we have some questions. We're going to start some questions um, in the chat first. Some folks asked questions a while back. Um, so forgive me if this question has already been answered. Um, and if it has been, just somebody pipe up and say that it's been answered and we can just keep going through. So it looks like Charlene Hill, um, back at, in, at 713, she asked, how does the unlimited pass work? Uh, so the unlimited pass bundles basically free weekly or monthly scooter unlocks at a fixed rate. And uh, you sign up and there's a, you know, eligibility criteria and things of that nature, but you can sign up through bird.co. How about Lyme and uh, Spin? Yeah, the thing Lyme is that uh, our unlimited pass or, uh, is for unlimited locks. Uh, that you're paying, say, $5.99 a month, you're receiving unlimited locks, and you also receive free 30-minute reservation. Um, and, of course, you can cancel those reservations, and you can cancel the uh, membership at, at any time. Cool. Spin? On, 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 we, we don't have an unlimited pass uh, okay. program available for Chicago at this time, but it's available okay. in other markets eventually. Okay. Well, yeah. this, gotcha. is, this is a pilot, so. Gotcha. Thank Try. you, guys. Okay. Um, all right, then, uh, then it looks like um, we'll take a couple more here from the chat and then we'll go into some of the, the hands raised. Um, at, it looks like uh, Mike Wieda, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name, um, you asked, do the scooter operators share part of the revenue with the city of Chicago? And if so, what percent does the city get? And I'll open it up. I can start there. Uh, so we pay in advance our permit fee. So the operators are required to pay $1 per scooter per day. That's essentially the uh, cost of the fees uh, that each operator has had to remit uh, to the city before we could even launch. So the city received about $1.2 million in revenue uh, before the program began. Um, in other cities, uh, we see fair uh, fee structures that go uh, per, uh, it's a per trip fee. So the more trips that occur, the more revenue cities receive. And that's something that I know that we're actively exploring for Chicago um, in, in different ways. But of course, the city uh, receives their funding uh, upfront before we can even launch on the public right of way. Gotcha. Thank you, Lee. Um, all right. And then it looks like uh, uh, Michelle, um, is it Bulo? Forgive me if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, but she's concerned that people are riding through Nicholas Park, too, and uh, almost knocked her over. How fast do the scooters go? So we're, uh, I can take this one. I think it'll be the same answer for all of us, but uh, we're geo governed, geo speed uh, governed to 15 miles an hour. Uh, Bird uh, has a, a warm up mode function. So if you're a first time or new rider, um, we geo speed down to about eight miles an hour for those first couple of rides. That is one, uh, to ensure that people have a comfort level when they start riding. Uh, and two, uh, for, for, for safety, clearly, um, to make sure that, that both riders and, and, and non-riders are safe. So I, I'm sorry to hear about that experience, by the way. Thank you, Maurice. Um, okay, so why don't we go and take a few hands. Uh, we see um, uh, HPKCC member, uh, Luis McCurry, has her hand raised. I think we need to um, unmute Luis. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome, Luis. All right. So this is very, very exciting because it's an opportunity to begin to get some autos off the road and get non-autos on the road and then begin to do some really major things for urban environments. Two questions, though. One of which is, uh, as a 70-year-old bike rider, I would really like to get a scooter class. And where can we get that? And two is I really have noticed over and over and over again purposely looking at this, that, that scooters essentially run bikes off the road. And I'm not sure if that's the ego trip because you can go faster than I am, if I understand that, uh, or if simply people aren't 
particularly trained? Uh, so those are my two questions. Yeah, I can, I can take that. Uh, that's a really good question, Louise. On, uh, so obviously in the middle of the pandemic, we've tried to limit our in-person interactions. Uh, but what we've developed in lieu of in-person uh, uh, first ride courses is a, is a digital first ride uh, course. And I know uh, some of the members here are, were part of our first uh, digital first ride. And uh, we plan to offer another one in November uh, so people can learn the rules of the road that are specific to Chicago. Um, that we offer, um, and you can learn about how to ride and uh, what the rules are and, and everything to stay safe um, on your scooters. Um, and and I, I do hear you. I, I'm also a biker um, and so a cyclist. And so I, I, what it's important is that if we're riding on streets, and so we're trying to balance the different modes uh, on the right of way and on public streets, right? Uh, so we don't want people to ride on the sidewalk. Uh, we want people to ride on streets, and if they have, if they're going to ride on streets, then the safest thing to do is to be able to keep up with the average cyclist, and as well as keep up with traffic, so that they can also feel safe on the road. Um, but I do hear you. I think we're in the middle of a pilot, and many, many, many more people require a lot more education. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Lee, for answering, and thank you, Louise, for your question. Uh, we'll take another one from uh, the folks who have their hands raised, uh, Michelle. And I'll let you pronounce your name, Michelle, because I was perhaps butchering it. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. There you go. Hi, welcome. Okay. Hi. Yeah, it's, I just say it's like a bowl of soup for you. Will you? <laughs> okay, but thank it's you. It's your French. It's, it's different, but I'll, I, I, I'll live with American. <laughs> gotcha. Um, I am, well, first of all, I'm curious whether it seems to me that this pilot isn't like a pilot to see whether to do it or not, but a pilot to see how to do it in the future, um, if that's correct. Um, but I am very much against these scooters, uh, mostly because there is not a, 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 an infrastructure which they are admitting that they're trying to advocate for um, for where scooters can safely ride. I'm, um, I drive, I bike and I walk. And um, the scooters in bike lanes are dangerous. They're, I mean, motorized vehicles in, in these situations are, it's different than if you're having to um, operate it with your own human power. Um, I'm, I feel that same, same way about the Divi um, electric bikes as well. They're going too fast. People don't have control and it's, it's dangerous for people who um, are not in a motorized mode of transportation. Um, but they're also, so I've, I've been almost knocked over in Nichols Park by um, riders who are out of control with their, their, they apologized to me, but it didn't really matter because it was, you know, after the fact, they, they were out of control of the um, scooter. Um, so we'll, we'll need you to wrap up here with your comment, please. Okay, okay. Um, I, I have a, a, a family friend who in another, another city who is now basically a vegetable as a result of a, a cycle, I mean, a, a, uh, a ride on, on one of these scooters. And I saw some girls in, um, on the street who are, you know, uh, uh, don't, don't have driver's license and are riding really fast. I mean, I, they don't know the rules of the road. I think it's just a very uh, dangerous on multiple levels. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay. So um, folks, we, we are scheduled here to end at 7.45. Um, and I think we're gonna take just a couple more questions and then we're gonna have to wrap up. Um, and so, okay, so it looks like uh, we'll take one from the chat and then um, uh, one from who has their hand raised. And it looks like um, Mike Weida, it looks like asked a question about has your companies rejected ideas to enforce um, the rules of riding on the road and properly docking the scooter when done? Um, what were the ideas that were rejected? This might kind of play in maybe to what Michelle was talking about a little bit as well. And I'll open up the floor. 
Um, I'm, I'm unclear on what you mean by uh, rejection, but uh, we're, we've always been open to ideas and suggestions about how we can best improve our operations, uh, especially in a city like Chicago, and especially in neighborhoods like Hyde Park and Kenwood uh, that are, that are uh, more dense than other neighborhoods uh, across Chicago. Uh, but we continue to uh, provide educational opportunities for our riders and non-riders, and we continue to uh, solicit input and feedback. I know uh, CDOT uh, has their survey that's open, and I'm, I'm glad to be able to understand uh, how people are feeling and seeing about how to best continue with a program like this, because this, the shared goal that I see in many cities, and including Chicago, is reducing automobiles from the streets. Um, and so there's got to be a way to be able to do it. Micromobility is just one way to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud that Chicago is, has taken this on to, to better understand how we can do it safely. Awesome. Thank you, Lee. Um, all right, we'll take one more question from our um, hands raised. We have uh, David Golding. Hi, uh, my name is uh, David. I'm, I'm a resident of Kenwood. And I think one of the key issues here is that Hyde Park is a walking community. Uh, we were recently awarded as the first uh, dimension, dementia friendly community in Chicago. Um, this obviously means that uh, pedestrians are vulnerable to motorized transportation accidents. Um, and so, you know, as a resident of the area, this has been really detrimental to most pedestrians in Hyde Park who have you know, of course, no interest in using scooters. Obviously, some do, but most don't. Um, and so this has, you know, been really dangerous for us. Uh, we, you know, we have scooters zipping by us. For scientific evidence, you can see a really good study uh, that was published in the American Journal of Emergency Medicine in 2019 called Sharing the Sidewalk. But I think one of the key things that's come out in this meeting, as Mr. Huff uh, established, is that none of your firms has prohibited riders from sidewalk riding. And by prohibited, I, I don't mean verbally prohibited or in marketing material, but I mean substantially in the sense of removing someone's scooter access based on uh, sidewalk riding. Um, and then similarly, all of your firms report reporting illegal driving to uh, your own firms rather than to law enforcement agencies. And I'm wondering, do any of your companies have a, a plan to change that policy and maybe to start to work with law enforcement agencies to crack down on illegal scooter operations, especially um, sidewalk riding? And do you have a plan to stop recommending reporting it to your, your very firms, but instead working with police to uh, really crack down? Uh, all right. Um, so, so I let, guess- Let me, uh, let me what, jump in. Let me jump well, in here. Uh, well, but, I, I want to be sure. David, did, was there a question in there that you wanted to have answered? Yeah, or? I'm wondering if, are, is, are, do any of your firms have any plans to change the policy whereby you recommend that people report violations to your companies rather than police agencies? In other words, are you going to have, do you have any plans to work more closely uh, with police agencies to crack down through a law enforcement angle rather than just a customer service? So on, on the law enforcement piece, so, well, I, actually I'll answer the, the, the reporting piece first is uh, all Chicagoans have access to uh, 311 and the city has created uh, their special access uh, through 311 for the e-scooter program for reporting types of uh, incidences and complaints. And uh, we, we, we do receive those complaints and we respond to them, uh, especially if there's egregious behavior. That's, that's something that's number one. On law enforcement, something that's really, really important to us, and as we've seen this year, is, is actually limiting interactions with law enforcement is, is something that's very important, uh, particularly so during last year's program, uh, during last year's pilot, um, the complaint was that the diversity of riders was mostly skewed towards wealthier middle-aged white men, somewhere between the age of 30 and say uh, 45 on the top level, or maybe even 25 to 40 on the top level. Um, and, and the city said that one of their goals is to ensure that everyone has access uh, to different types of transportation. Um, and what that means in different communities uh, is that law enforcement may not necessarily be the best way to be able to, to go about governing ourselves accordingly um, and increasing diversity for ridership. Um, and so we're, we're, very, we're very in tune with, uh, with what's happening uh, within our country, within the city. Um, on how we can best respond to these types of things. We, we, we want to limit law enforcement interactions, but at the same time, we want to increase education, educational opportunities uh, to, to lower, to reduce um, safety violations. Uh, and that's, that's a continuing goal, I know, of all three operators is to continue pushing down on, on violations because we want to continue being in Chicago and it, it won't happen if we continue seeing uh, violations.
Thank you, Lee. I, I appreciate that answer. Um, and I know I said we were out of questions, but we have one more um, from somebody who has his hand raised, who is also a youth. Um, and so I'd like to have this question. Uh, Marshall, um, in parentheses, Batman, uh, is here with us. Marshall, can you um, unmute yourself? Yes. Hi, Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Marshall. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Hope all is well. I'm Thank a you. local youth in the Hyde Park community, and I'm really active with the Chamber of Commerce and everything. I was I just had two quick questions. The first question is, how do you guys do sanitation for COVID-19? Or is that like, or yeah, how do you guys sanitize? And the second question is, um, so if I've noticed and I find find I find riding the scooters are really fun and it's more like a roller coaster, like like my friends, it's more like a roller coaster instead of a transit um, thing for us. So I was just wondering. And I know there's been a lot of problems in Hyde Park with teens running around on scooters and tra creating traffic. So I was just wondering, have you, did you guys expect that for you from youth? And are you guys trying to fix that problem? So I'll, I'll jump in on this one. Uh, thank you, Marshall, for um, your service to the community and for the question. Uh, on the COVID uh, response, uh, I believe all of us would have the, a similar answer here. We all have COVID protocols. Uh, as soon as uh, the virus and, and pandemic uh, hit our markets. Uh, we worked with our in, you know, in-house folks to make sure that we had CDC approved uh, cleaning solvents, made sure they had gloves, masks, goggles, et cetera, uh, each time that they interact with a scooter uh, out in the field, uh, they clean that scooter. Uh, there are deeper cleans uh, on, frequent, on frequent basis uh, in the community. So that, that's uh, answer number one, because the, the, the safety of both the riders and our, our, our team uh, is of paramount important to, uh, to us. Um, the second um, question in terms of the youth um, riding, I, I think it's a twofold uh, answer. Uh, one, yes, we are aware that there sometimes is underage riding in some communities. Um, we've seen that uh, as a problem that we, again, I think going back to the, the previous question, we have worked with various city agencies, community members, et cetera, uh, to address that. Um, but I think it also portends a, a deeper question, which is how are youth able to move around their city most effectively? I'm not advocating for scooter use uh, with youth, but I think it's a question that, that policymakers uh, and communities need to wrestle with in terms of what are the micromobility choices that young people have in a community like Hyde Park. Thank you, Maurice, um, and thank you, Marshall. All right, that wraps up um, the questions. Roger, I wanna turn it over to you quickly. Okay, so we're gonna take another couple minutes uh, for a post forum poll. If you could open that up and uh, Barbara, it, I, I think the earlier comment was it needed to be held open just a little longer. So I'll let you say when to bring it down. Thank you. You guys should be seeing that right now. While the poll is being taken, I want to give another plug for the city's feedback form. And uh, this part of, they're actively soliciting feedback. There's a, a link to the poll that was put in the, the chat and uh, also on the city or chicago.gov slash scooters has a link to the, the that uh, pilot evaluation feedback form. And Barb, it's just in the, the chat again now. Um, so they want to hear from us and uh, it's really appreciate. I want to personally thank everybody, the three participants uh, in uh, reverse alphabetical order by company, Daniel, Lee, and Maurice. Thank you so much. Uh, and lastly, I want to point out that in the chat window, in the lower right hand corner, next to the two line, then there's a little file icon, and then there's this little obscure icon with three dots. If you click on that, you should be able to save the chat. And because there's a lot of good information in the, in the chat box in terms of links. So please take advantage of that. And uh, lastly, 
lastly, we will be sending in a post event email out with a link to the uh, to the recording. And uh, if there are questions that were in the chat that didn't get answered, we'll reach out to uh, our three operators and get seek input and and share more information. That's what this is all about: it's community dialogue. So thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Roger. Okay, while we're wrapping up that poll, I just want to say um, to close us out tonight on behalf of the Hyde Park Kenwood Community Conference, I want to thank uh, all of you for joining us um, for tonight's Transit Task Force Community Dialogue on e-scooters. E um, I also want to thank our representatives, um, Maurice Henderson, uh, Lee Foley, um, and Daniel Bezinovich. Um, I want to thank you all. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you to um, uh, our uh, representatives from our local um, government offices who are participating um, as uh, viewers and, and uh, are on our Zoom call tonight. I want to also recognize our HPKCC team, uh, Barbara Moreno Paschal, uh, board member um, and organizer, um, uh, also Mila Jamison, board member and organizer, uh, Gary Oswald. Uh, HPKCC board member and co-chair um, uh, of the Transit Task Force, um, and of course, Roger Huff. Thank you, our, our MC um, and HPKCC member and co-chair of the Transit Task Force. Um, th so if the conversation doesn't end today. Uh, the conference would like your voices to continue to be heard. Um, if you want to learn more about HPKCC, if you want to get involved, please web visit our website, www.highpark.org join our organization you can join um, at any level on our website like us on facebook follow us on twitter um, and we will um, after the election uh, be holding uh, a follow-up community dialogue on the criminal legal system um, so once again thank you all for attending thank you for being here and stay safe one, one more point uh, i just tried to save the chat and that wasn't activated so the way you save the chat is Click in the chat window, select everything, Control A or Command A, and then Control C to save it to your clipboard, and then you can, you'll have it. All right. Thank you, everybody, um, and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you.